today we are going to talk about uh, structure and function of liver. Primarily this lecture is about the histology of liver, uh, but this is very important to understand because in so many liver diseases, this histology alters. That is what we call it liver histopathology. And you are supposed to know as doctors liver histopathology very well when you talk about the liver diseases. So first we will talk about the liver histology. Liver is the largest internal organ. In adult person, it is approximately how much is the weight of it? Yes. In adult person, who can tell me approximately weight? Try to guess. Uh, it is about, uh, about one, one and a half kilograms, right? You can say the weight of liver in an adult person is uh, about 1,500 grams. Of course, that becomes approximately one and a half kilograms, right? This is the largest internal organ, right? And another way to express it, its weight is that it is usually two and a half percent of your total body weight. 2.5 percent of total body weight. Now liver is situated anatomically, right? Anatomically it is situated in a very strategic situation that all the blood which is coming from the GIT and pancreas and from the spleen, right, it is passing through the liver, right. This, this has a lot of implications. For example, all the nutrients which you are absorbing from the GIT, first they will go to the liver and then they will go to general circulation. Then if unfortunately if you have absorbed some toxins from GIT, first they should pass through liver and get detoxified in the liver so that general circulation is not exposed to those toxins, right? In the same way from the spleen, one of the function of spleen is to uh, destroy the old RBCs and remnants of those RBCs which are being destroyed, they may come to liver and liver has also RBC clearance mechanisms, kuffer cells, so that they should be removed. Then. Of course, blood from the pancreas, pancreas is also going to the liver. So that from pancreas, insulin and glucagon and other important hormones should go to the liver so that under the directions of those hormones, liver can handle the glucose and handle other nutrients and metabolites, right? So first of all, you should understand that liver is very strategically present between the GIT, spleen and pancreas on one side of the liver and general circulation on the other side of the liver. Liver is in between. Is that right? Uh, let me put a very simple diagram that let's suppose, first of all, I will explain a little bit about circulatory architecture of the liver. That how the liver cells are getting the blood, right? And how hepatocytes of liver cells are exposed to the blood. The first thing which I told you that here is your GIT right and here is your spleen here is your pancreas so what i was telling that blood from all these organs is going to the liver right blood from the git of course this is the venous blood from the git as well as splenic vein right as well as from pancreatic venous drainage all of this is going to the liver. This is first thing you should understand, right? Again, from GIT, lot of nutrients, they must go to the liver so that liver can handle it. For example, if you have ate, eaten a food with a lot of carbohydrates, so extra amount of glucose which is going to the liver should be converted into glycogen so that a level of glucose in the general circulation should not go very high. Suppose here is your general circulation and eventually, of course, from the liver blood will drain into general circulation, right? This is one thing from the GIT. Secondly, from GIT toxins can be absorbed, bacteria or their toxins can be absorbed or inadvertently you may have ingested some toxins. So many of these toxins should pass through the liver and liver should detoxify them. Is that right? Another way 
It also acting as a detoxifier so that it protects the general circulation from the toxins which are coming from GIT, right? Then, you know, from pancreas, blood is also going to the, draining to the liver. So that pancreas adding to the blood to insulin, glucagon and other hormones and those hormones will act on the liver cells so that liver cell can appropriately handle the nutrients and metabolites which are coming from the GIT. Then I told you that blood from the spleen, splenic vein, that is also eventually draining its blood to the liver so that in the spleen when RBC's breakdown is going on, the remnants of those breakdown should be cleared off by the liver so that general circulation should not receive those remnants of RBC destruction. So in this way, liver is draining the blo uh, blood which is coming from GIT and from the pancreas and from the spleen. All this blood which is coming to the liver, uh, this is coming through which vein? Yes, Gary. Mr. Gary is going to impress all of us. Um, yeah, portal vein. Excellent. So this is your portal vein. This is your portal vein. But there is one problem. That blood which is coming through the portal vein, right, this is venous blood, right? Because from the aorta, from the aorta, blood has gone to these organs. It has gone to GIT, right? It has gone through to the splenic artery, pancreatic arterial supply. So actually from the aorta, oxygenated blood went to these organs. And these organs have utilized some degree of oxygen from the blood, right? And then when this blood from these organs recollect and going to the liver, is that right? It is having lesser amount of oxygen. Again, let me explain. What was happening? That blood which was going to the spleen or to the pancreas or to this part of GIT, we call it splanchnic circulation. In splanchnic circulation, when arterial blood comes to these organs, right, oxygen has significant amount of oxygen has been utilized. So blood which is going to the liver through portal system, this blood is not very rich in oxygen. Even though it may be rich in nutrients, it may be rich in metabolites, or unfortunately it may be rich in toxins, or it may be rich in many hormones, but it is not very rich in what? Oxygen. To manage that problem, nature provide direct supply. There is a celiac artery here, and one of the branch of the celiac artery directly supplies the liver with the oxygenated blood. So it means that liver is getting double blood supply. There is double blood supply going to the liver, right? This is your portal vein, and what is that? What is that? Hepatic artery. What is that? Hepatic artery. Hepatic artery. Let me draw it more clearly. We'll put the liver in proper perspective with the whole body circulation. I will draw this diagram more clearly. And okay, here I draw the right heart. I'm going to draw the whole circulation just to put the liver into proper perspective, circulation of the liver. What is this? Inferior vena cava, that is? Superior vena cava. Here we have the right heart, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery. Here you have your left atrium and left ventricle. From here we can say what is coming? Aorta, is that right? And this is your systemic circulation. Now what I'm going to do, that I'm going to put the liver into proper circulation. Of course, you all of you must be knowing, here is the lungs and pulmonary blood is going to the lungs. And there it breaks down into pulmonary capillaries. It gets oxygenated and oxygenated blood comes to the, yes, left. Is that right? Now, where the liver is present, liver is present uh, in our diagram, we'll put it here. 
I'll make it a little downward. And liver is here, right? Here is your spleen. It is not an anatomical diagram, it's a functional diagram. Here is your small intestine, am I right? Let's suppose here I put your pancreas, right? Now, the arteries, there are arteries which are bringing blood to these organs. For example, to the spleen, blood is coming from, yes, splenic artery. Is that right? Then there are mesenteric arteries, superior mesenteric arteries, gastric arteries, and there are arteries which are taking blood to stomach. Okay, I'll make it from here. Blood is coming to stomach, and then it is coming to, yes, small intestine, and also from here, it is going to, what is this? Pancreas. Is that right? Now, the point which you have to understand that blood which is coming to GIT, right? Of course, this blood which is coming to GIT, arterial blood, it is well oxygenated, right? This blood is, these arterial vessels are eventually breaking down into capillaries. So there are splenic capillary system here, splenic capillary system here. Of course, pancreas also has capillaries, isn't it? And of course, within the GIT also, there are capillaries. Is that right? Now, from these splenic capillaries or pancreatic capillaries or from these uh, gastrointestinal capillaries, blood will be recollected. Blood will be recollected into venous channels. Is that right? Now, from these capillaries, blood is recollected. Now, when blood is recollected, it is going to be drained into portal veins, right? Now, here is superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein will also fuse with it, right? And superior mesenteric vein is this one going up. And what is this? Splenic vein coming from here. So, Splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein, they fuse together and they make, what is this? Yes, please. Portal vein. Is that right? Now, what we have understood that the blood which is coming from splenic vein and this is superior mesenteric veins, this blood is originating from capillary beds of pancreas and spleen and the gastrointestinal system. So this blood which is coming here, it has lost some of its oxygen to GIT and spleen and pancreas. So it is relatively poor in oxygen as compared to arterial blood. This is your portal, yes, vein. So nature wanted to supply well oxygenated blood to liver as well. For that purpose, from aorta, there is a celiac trunk. Have you heard of it? Okay, that's good. One of the branch of celiac trunk is? Yes. Hepatic artery. This is your hepatic artery. And hepatic artery is also bringing the blood to the, yes, liver. This is hepatic artery. Right, so we can say there are two inputs to the liver. Now, blood should pass through the liver. For this purpose, I will explain a little bit the internal architecture of the liver. The parenchyma of the liver is mainly made of hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are the special cells which are making the parenchymal cells of the liver, right? The functional cells of the liver. Now, hepatocytes within the liver are arranged in special lobular structures, right? Uh, those lobules are explained in many ways. One of the way to explain them is classical 
explanation, we call it classic lobules. 